for banks, I think it, it's an incredibly challenging time for them because they're doing this against the backdrop of a very difficult economic climate, a lot of pressure on them to recapitalize, uh, and also with a set of rules that are not entirely clear at the moment and which indeed are changing even, even in the time scale in which these reforms are to be implemented. So they're having to do what for them is probably the, the largest single structural change the industry has ever faced and I can't think of any other industry that would have faced something on this scale against um, a moving backdrop of regulation and expectations and, and requirements. What do you think are the key challenges which our clients are facing when they look at this, uh, uh, this raft of bank reform? Well, the, I think the key issue for banks is going to be uh, where exactly to put the ring fence in creating the ring fence bank and the non-ring fence bank, which is what the legislation mandates they have to do. Um, the, there is a minimum, there is, a, there is an irreducible requirement in terms of the activities that have to go into the ring fence bank, basically core activities of deposit taking from uh, uh, retail customers and small and medium sized enterprises, but you can put more than that into the ring fence bank. So for banks, the key issue for them is what business mix they want uh, to divide, how they want to divide their business up between the ring fence bank and the non-ring fence bank. And then that in turn leads to, well, what is the optimization of capital for, for the bank uh, in, in terms of supporting uh, those businesses? What assets uh, should go into those businesses? How they will fund themselves? Uh, so, for example, in relation to the to the ring fence bank, um, one of the key issues will be uh, the extent to which they will be able to fund themselves. Do we think that overall the cost of funding is likely to increase? The, the, all banks will be in the market for increased capital and increased funding at the same time, uh, and therefore there must be a, a real possibility that funding costs uh, will rise, and then obviously for the non-ring fence bank, one of the issues for them is they don't have, a they won't have access to the retail deposit base um, that they currently have in a universal bank structure. So they will be reliant on uh, um, corporate deposits and wholesale funding, and that may result in higher funding costs. And are there any um, specific milestones or key stages? Uh, that our clients should be aware of. Uh, in the UK, the first key, key milestone is really uh, sort of around May of 2015, which is when the expectation is that the uh, legislative framework for the reform of the UK banking sector uh, should be complete and final. Uh, and after that, the target date is really the uh, end of 2019, which is the point by which the government wants the reform of the UK banking sector to have been completed. Uh, do you think there are any benefits f for banks in, uh, in going through this uh, structural reform exercise? Uh, I mean, on one level, this is not something which I think most institutions would have voted for uh, had they been given the option. But being presented with the, the, the challenge of bank reform, you know, clearly there are uh, opportunities that, that present themselves to, to our banking clients. Uh, part of which will be, I think, how do you optimise your structure uh, to make the best use uh, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, opportunity uh, that arises from what will essentially be a, a wholesale shake-up of the, 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 the banking sector. What do you think the implications are for, for banks of, of the separation uh, and what priorities do you think they need to uh, uh, consider as they head into that process? There are a number of uh, implications, obviously, indeed, a vast number of, of implications from the uh, very significant to the very granular. Take case in point, you know, what will your branding be for your retail bank and your commercial bank? Will you operate under the same brand? Will you seek to distinguish it? Uh, what are the implications for uh, employees, for your pension schemes? Uh, all of those things will have to be uh, addressed at some stage in the process. But I think the uh, key implication and, and, and probably the, the principal initial priority is really the question as to 
uh, how you're going to deal with the options that you have uh, in terms of the business that you put uh, in one or the other bank.